Good morning, Shavua Tov. I'm Paul Mandel. I teach Midrash here, Talmud, and uh, Second Temple period literature. There's a story about a Talmudic rabbi of the third, early third century who um, was so proud of his knowledge that he said, uh, I want anybody to test me. He put himself on the top of a mast of a ship and he said, uh, anybody should ask me a question and if I don't give the answer from our Mishnah, I'm going to throw myself into the sea. So I'm not going to throw myself into the sea, but I'm going to ask you to come up with uh, topics uh, that relate to Judaism or Jews uh, that you're interested in. And uh, I'm going to try to see if I can show you that perhaps most of them will be related in one way or another to the Second Temple period, which of course was right prior to, the, from the destruction of the First Temple by the Babylonians in the 6th century BC till the destruction of the temple, Second Temple by the Romans in 70 CE. So please, um, I ask for just one, two words, sort of play a little game of uh, word association. Um, what is Judaism or what is a part of Judaism for you that you would be interested in, in, in discussing? Not necessarily that, that period. Please. Yes. Korbanot. Korbanot, sacrifices. There are no sacrifices today, right? <clears throat> what do we do instead of sacrifices? What are sacrifices for, right? So the very, uh, uh, obviously, so maybe somebody thought I was planting that question because obviously sacrifices are defined a temple. What does it mean when a temple is not there anymore? And, uh, and, and, but I think more interestingly, what is temple for you? In other words, why would you think of temple when you would think of Judaism, your Judaism? Because we go to shul and ah. we pray. We go to shul and pray. And? and it bothers me to, to say that we go to court or not. When we pray, we think of God. We want to go to shul to be with our other Jews in some kind of relationship with God. Is sacrifice prayer? That's a major question that we can deal with in Second Temple period. Did people go to the temple? Why did people go to the temple? And uh, did they go to pray? If they didn't go to pray, and in fact, very surprisingly, if you look through the New Testament, which is a good window on uh, Second Temple period Judaism, at least of the first century, because they're talking about a bunch of Jews that are walking around there uh, in Israel and Jerusalem and Nazareth, um, what were they doing? And in fact, we can find a very interesting thing that whenever Jesus or Paul, two Jews, went into shul on Shabbat, um, uh, they didn't pray. Very interesting. They read the Torah, they read the Navi, the, the, from the uh, prophets, but they didn't pray. So that's a major question that we'll be dealing with of where did prayer come in and what is the relationship to the temple and sacrifices. May I have another uh, suggestion? Yes. The status of oral law. Again, another planted question, obviously. Oral law was created during the segment, or transmitted. When we read that first Mishnah in Mishnah of Avot, Moshe Kibel Torah Sinai Um Saral Yeshua, God, and Moses received the Torah on Mount Sinai. Now we all think of those, well, of, of, the, of the law in here, right? The actual uh, Bible, uh, the Torah. Uh, so maybe not all of the five books of Moses were given to him at that time. Uh, even tradition doesn't assume that. But uh, what does that mean for all the laws that we do or the customs that we do? Where were they coming from? They're not in the Torah. They're somewhere else. So you mentioned very properly oral law. We know the oral law is, is uh, in these books of Mishnah and Talmud, Tosefta, Midrash. But that's much later. That comes in the second or third or fourth century. What were the origins of the moral law? What were the origins? Um, where did they, how did they become what they became? Both in terms of legal aspects, you mentioned oral law, but it also includes a lot of books on the back there, which are midrash, which deal with the commentaries of the Bible. Another suggestion. Another two minutes I have, maybe. Any other suggestion? Yes. Laws of Pesach. Laws of Pesach. We'll be uh, having our. Approaching Pesach and everybody can see. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful example because Pesach is again one of those things that seems to be connected, in, at least in the Torah, so much with sacrifices. After all, the Paschal sacrifice, Aliyah uh, la regel, people came up to Jerusalem to the temple. 
But we don't have that Passover today. We have a whole different Pesach. Leil HaSeder. Where did Leil HaSeder come from? Did people in the Second Temple period have a Leil HaSeder? And what is the relationship between the, um, the actual, not only the Seder ceremony and its relationship to temple and home, but the idea of Exodus? And I want to add another thing here. During the Second Temple period, um, there were many Jewish authors we don't know about nowadays, both in Hellenistic period in Alexandria who wrote in Greek, sort of like American authors, who wrote plays, who wrote uh, philosophic tractates, who wrote historical tractates, um, who wrote uh, Philo is one of the major uh, uh, examples of this. And uh, we hardly really read these people. Many of them are fragmentary because they really didn't come down. Um, Jubilees is a book which was written in, in Hebrew but then translated into various languages including Ethiopic Gez, which was only discovered 200 years ago. And um, it, it relates a whole new way of looking at the Bible. Um, things that we thought we knew of what Abraham did with, the, the, with, his, uh, um, with the idols of his father, which of course is not written in the Torah, we find original uh, approaches to them during this period. And more importantly, perhaps, or not necessarily more importantly, but as important, we see them as being forerunners for our Talmudic literature and Midrashic literature uh, today. One last, perhaps, suggestion. Um, I thought somebody would say, if some, I say Judaism, right? What's the first thing you think of? So one person said synagogue, sacrifices, prayer. I thought rabbi would come up, right? And, um, uh, right. So is rabbi Jewish? And we're going to find out the rabbi is not so Jewish. And in fact, the Second Temple period, there were no rabbis, but there were what we would call sages. But even they were not so much as involved in Jewish society as we thought they would be. And we will determine, we will read some of the, we will try to cull from the Second Temple period literature. Um, uh, and sometimes we have to sort of scrape a little bit. Sometimes we have a whole th uh, 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 treasure as the treasure of the second of the uh, Qumran community, which was dis discovered 70 years ago, uh, and uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which present a lot of information of what happened there. Were they rabbis around? If there weren't rabbis, where did Jews receive their spiritual knowledge and spiritual education? Um, so these are all topics which we will deal with, um, where we will see the rootings of our things that we are so familiar with um, and try to find out our really roots, where, where not, I won't say where they came from, um, but how they developed into uh, what they developed. Last, one last thing. Um, the very aspect of different types of Judaisms, Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, Reconstructionist, Atheistic, or Idealistic, was very common to Second Temple period Jews. Josephus talks about three sects, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes. We're going to discuss all three sects, again, from the writings of Josephus and others. Thank you very much.